streaming live on Facebook. Yay. Yay. Get a little lunch hour fun. Yeah. So, I mean, just for, for people watching this, obviously Shada and I were talking for a few minutes before we hit live and we had just started talking about your schedule with the new baby and everything. Yep. And a lot of people asked about that, which I want, I'll ask you about in a second, but before that, in case anybody in here doesn't know who you are, can you tell people who you are and like what you do and all that stuff first? Yeah, sure. So my name's Shada and I have a YouTube channel. I'm Canadian. Um, I've been, uh, I'm an artist and YouTuber and you'll find me online as Shada Campbell and I make videos encouraging um, the artist in all of us. And it's a lot of watercolor, bullet journaling and drawing. And I just want people to feel empowered to get creative because it can be scary, but it really shouldn't be scary. Hey, a question from me. When you meet a stranger, is that like, is that what you tell them? If they say, hi, Shada, I'm Mark. What do you do? Or do I you just say, say I'm an artist? It depends. I usually just say I'm an artist. YouTuber sounds kind of like flaky. And like, if you're at like a doctor's appointment or something, they're like, oh, you're just unemployed or like, you know, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. artists, even though that can sound flaky too, <laughs> I just usually go with that. Yeah. yeah. Cause you're not going to be like, I'm a content creator. People are like, what is that even? What is that? Yeah. yeah. Or even worse. I'm an influencer. Like, Oh God. <laughs> no. the script, but I yeah, would never, I would never. <laughs> when Ryan and I were traveling a few years ago and we were staying at a bunch of like hostels and stuff, every time somebody would say, what do you do? And it was like pretty shortly after I had quit my job to do this full time. And yeah, it would make me so uncomfortable every time because I was like, there's yes. so many different ways I could explain this. And it's always based on who I'm talking to. Yes. You know? It really is based on the person. When I stopped, like when I stopped working, what I was doing was actually running my own shop. And so I was like, I'm going to close the shop and do this. And people were like, oh, I'm so sorry about that. Like, And I was like, no, it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a really good thing. And you could do your shop. Like, um, I had a little um, seasonal gift shop in Prince Edward Island called the Geranium. Oh, cute. It was fun. It was just a summer thing. And then like, so I was taking winters to do this. So it was like a really nice, easy transition. And then eventually I was like, you know, the summers are just too crazy. I want to enjoy my summers. I want to just do YouTube full time. But there was like a generational thing, I think as well, where people were just like, oh, that's so terrible for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, no, it's really, it's positive. It's like, actually <laughs> having a store is an insane amount of work. It and is very stressful. And yes. imagine, so I guess you closed it before COVID then? I did. And, you know, I got lucky because my last season was 2018. Um, so I could have like snuck one more good season in there, but I obviously have friends that are still out there doing that. And they had a rough year last year and like this year will be a bit better, but mm -hmm. it's going to be like three summer seasons, you know, until it gets back to normal, even if yeah. there is back to normal, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I know we have a bunch of people tuning in, but nobody's saying anything in the chat unless my computer is not working, which is entirely possible. So <laughs> guys, good. if you're here, say hi, tell us where you're tuning in from. Cause we, we want to talk to you. We're, we're here yes. to talk to you guys too, and each other, obviously, but okay. Well, definitely like through the questions that people submitted beforehand, the yep. biggest yep theme and the biggest thing people were wondering about is like how this how how your art life has been affected by now having a newborn so lots of questions about like yeah you know, how do you plan on managing your time so this was a question yeah. from Jessica how do you plan on managing your time between art and bub super cutie by the way <laughs> um yeah I'm really lucky because um, Chris and I, Chris also works um, with me full time now on the YouTube channel. So there's two of us, we're a team. Um, so it makes it like really easy to do um, working and parenting. And so our plan for the summer is just to really enjoy uh, Sully, enjoy our new baby. And that's hard because we get all kinds of cool stuff coming across our desk, but we're just kind of saying no to, to everything right now. And um, we'll be back to posting videos in July, but we actually won't go back to the like office until August. Um, so that's really nice. And it's nice to be on kind of like a mat pat leave in the summertime as well. So we get to like hang out and go to the park and all that. And then when we go back, um, I think we're just going to wing it, but we're going to do a lot of baby wearing because he really likes to be on us. 
and I can paint with him on me. I mean, I could do a lot with that little guy on me. <laughs> and Chris wears him all the time as well. We have so many different baby carrier systems and wraps and we're trying to all of it. Um, so I think the plan will just be to see how that goes. And we have a little bassinet that we have at the studio um, for if he ever naps. <laughs> He doesn't like so to know. <laughs> your studio is not at home. Then you have a separate no, studio. We have a separate studio. So we have always um, moved and traveled a lot. And for that reason, we've never bought a home, which is kind of getting old this year. <laughs> um, and now the housing market is like bananas. Mm -hmm. So our timing is a little off <laughs> on that one. But um, we've always uh, traveled a lot. So we always rent apartments. And in our last apartment in Prince Edward Island, we used kind of like this weird spare room as our studio that was right in the center of the apartment. And it was a nice space, but it was so annoying because like your studio can be quite messy and you can have like all this rigging and cameras and yeah, it can just be a lot and see it all here working on. Yeah. <laughs> projects and it gets bananas. So um, like it just got old by the time we left, by the time we moved to Halifax, which was a year ago, we were like, I think this, because we never, we never could close the door on that room. It was like a room that you walk through to get to all the other rooms. Um, so we were like, I think it might be time to move it out of our apartment. Um, and how big of an apartment can you really rent? Uh, so it's been really good. We've had a studio space for a year and it's, it's like just super nice to be able to close the door and just be like, that's work. I'm walking away from work and stuff. Yeah. I I've experimented with both. Also, I, mm -hmm. uh, I was telling you before we got on that at my last house, yes. my studio was very small. It was like a little, That's tiny hard. little room. And, uh, like you said, it got old. So eventually I looked into my, a friend of mine here in Ottawa has a, she's a florist and she bought like a big floral studio, but above it, there's little loft things. And so I turned one into my office and I like spent all this time painting a mural on the back of it. And I set it up as my backdrop for my YouTube videos. And I like moved everything there. And then like six months later, we bought a house that had a room that I could yeah. use. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I did, I did really enjoy um, like being Yes, yeah. having it and which I never thought was going to be a thing when I quit yeah. my job because oh I thought God. I was going to love to just wake up in my pajamas Same. and stay home. Same. Yes. Um, but it does make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. It gets that's weird how you can start to really just want to like go out to work. I always laugh when I hear like these little like ads on YouTube for people being like work from home. And it's like super weird, random ways of like making money online passively like affiliate sales or something like all these like kind of scammy ish I'm like that doesn't sound fun it just means working really hard like in bed in your pjs if you really want to work in bed in your pjs which is going to be fun for like a day you know yeah. like a week maybe and then you're going to want to go back out where there's like sushi that you can get take out and like meet people, people. on the street yeah, like, people. yeah. <laughs> That's why I loved workshop week so much just because I feel like I haven't, I, I haven't had coworkers in so long and you guys all kind of became my coworkers in a way. And like, it's so nice. You built a great community. It's, I just feel so happy that we are hopefully not going to lose that now. Yeah. It's great to meet and reach out to people and be able to be like, Oh, what do you think of this? Cause I don't know anybody. I don't know if you have any friends, but I don't know anybody else who is a content creator, not in my real life. Um, just online relationships but even those are very like sort of tacit so this has been great to like really meet yeah. people yeah it's a very different like type of person to talk to if they understand yeah. the world that you're in because even yeah. like your closest friends that you try to explain it to they, they, they just don't get it until you've done it you know yeah totally, totally. Yeah. it's just like a new job that's out there that's really uh -huh. weird. <laughs> um okay lots of other questions that like we, I have only asked you one question so far and we've <laughs> so much so um Barbara asked what supplies do you recommend for somebody who has just started their creative journey which is a huge That's question a great but. question and I love that question because if you actually go back to the start of the channel when I began I had very limited supplies super limited when I was really starting the videos Chris and I were really moving we were like traveling across Canada we were living not out of our car but like we were you know had impermanent housing we would work at a hotel so we would live at that hotel or whatever and then we were in Iceland for a while so I had just 
a, I would recommend starting with a couple good, it depends what you're doing, but say you're following along with some of my YouTube videos, I would recommend a couple good fine liners. You can probably just bypass Sharpies. They're nice for like crafty projects, but getting a couple good fine liners like Pigma Microns. Um, Which actually was another person's question. So I'll just tie this in because someone yeah. asked, um, she said, Shada, I was wondering about the Pigma Micron pens you use with watercolor. She said, I have some st Stedler. Is that how you say it? Stedler? Stedler, I think. I, I, I um, <laughs> she said she has some of those, but before she goes out and buys the, the Micron pens, she wants to know if the Stedler ones would be fine or if the ink will bleed with watercolor. Oh, I don't know if the Stedler is archival inks. I mean, I've had some uh, Stadler, like the tripless fine liners are good, but I, oh, I just don't know off the top of my head. But if you look up, like if they're archival, if they're, you know, waterproof, that info is definitely out there. I just um, Googled it really quick. And the first yeah. thing that comes up says the ink is water-based. Okay. So not. Um, but Stedler makes a pen called pigment liners, which are permanent and archival. So okay. as long as you look up the ones that are permanent and yeah. archival, yeah. Yeah. The pigment microns might be a little bit easier to find, like, cause maybe those Stadler ones are a little less popular. Maybe I, I haven't seen a lot of those. I've seen a lot of the triplets, which I think are the water-based, right? So, mm -hmm. um, but a couple good fine liners and, um, uh what i did back then and what i still do is get if you want to work with any markers getting a a few markers either a set or go to the art store and just pick out the colors that you really like and you can kind of make your own little mini color palette like six marker colors is going to get you a long ways and it can also help develop your own artistic style and you have kind of your own color palette you don't need a lot you can do a lot with a little um as well as uh, if you want to get into watercolors, a small watercolor set, and you don't need a huge set. Um, I really like the uh, Munio um, watercolors. I find when you're learning using pans, like the cake paints or pans is just so easy. You could just open the set and start painting. Um, although if you like tube paints, they're great as well. But the Munio is really good quality for the price. So it's like really good bang for your buck. You can get a set on Amazon for 30 bucks, get a good color selection. And um, the pigment is, you know, it's, it's good for the price. I've never even heard of it. Is, how do you spell that? It's a uh, M U N G Y. -O. Oh yes. I just don't pronounce it the same way. <laughs> yeah. So I definitely think this one I've got down because a lot of people uh, told me how to pronounce it <laughs> in my comments, which is good. It's like, um, moon yo, kind of like you're saying gyoza, moon yo. I think uh, like um, that might not be perfect, but <laughs> the <laughs> idea there. But those paints are such good quality for the price. And I used to use the koi ones, and they are also great, but they're just very hard, and it can be hard to pick up the pigment out of the cake, out of the pan. So um, they're really good. So yeah, cheap watercolor set and some good fine liners, a couple markers, and you can do a lot. You can really do a lot. Yeah, I like what you said about just like being selective about the colors and stuff because, and I was, I can't remember if I was talking about this at workshop week with somebody or before that, but like I have this whole dream box full of every art supply. It's like a Michael's in here and I get so, so overwhelmed with like decision paralysis. Like I'm going to sit down and create something and I can't decide. And even yeah. I think it was in my last YouTube video, I was making a Father's Day card and I was like, I am using two pens yeah <laughs> like and they're both black and I'm not getting creative because I'm gonna I'm gonna frustrate myself and I'm just gonna limit myself and it always works out better that way for me when yeah. I only have select things and honestly I just want to sit here and talk to you about travel because Ryan and I have traveled a lot too but um I won't because that's not what people <laughs> are here for but uh, when we were traveling too I also had a very limited like I had one little pencil case with a few different things in it and I found I was like extra creative yeah, when we were traveling so much yes a hundred percent it's kind of a shame actually how few supplies I will use now that um because art companies send us stuff and it's always super exciting to open a package and then I kind of always revert back to like what I know and what I love and it's like black pens yeah. and good mechanical pencil <laughs> like I'll always get excited to get new art supplies but yeah. will I use them I don't know and I think a lot of people watching can probably relate to that yeah yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah you have to have the new shiny stuff but you still yeah. just want your micron pens and your Tombow or yeah exactly yeah. 
Um, all right, what else do we have? How long, uh, this is an interesting one because we kind of just touched on it, but how long did it take you to build up your craft room? But they didn't ask just about pens and stuff. They said pens, electronics, et cetera. Um, like I wondered, do you mean my, what, like the whole studio? Kind of? Yeah, let's go with that. Cause I think that's yeah. interesting. It's always kind of a work in progress, but it took me, um, this was something that I didn't rush and it probably took me two or three years really to do it. I mean, I used to shoot when I started the channel, I just had like a little point and shoot, um, Sony camera that someone had given us for our wedding. And it was just like, you know, nothing special. Um, so I would just shoot on that and I had like a $20 tripod, um, you know, and I just didn't give myself any like hassle about it. I knew that I could make better quality videos, but you know, until I was making money at it, I didn't want to go crazy. And I just wanted to put out content that I felt like at least the subject matter is good, or hopefully it's friendly and it's encouraging. And, um, you know, uh, so I wasn't in a rush, but it's taken, we are always in the search for more tech and how can we be better and how can we get a better angle and how can we make the lighting more even? And so it's kind of like this endless and I really like shooting with natural light and Chris really hates it, which is totally makes sense because it's very frustrating to shoot with natural light, but it's also very beautiful. <laughs> and um, so it's like, then you could have a better studio space and you could potentially have a better room with better light. And, um, but you know, if you're, if you are starting out on YouTube, if that's like part of the, if anyone is interested in that, you know, you don't need a lot to get started. And, and when I was starting, I would get sometimes once I built up an audience, people would say like, this camera angle is not close enough, or this isn't good enough quality. And I just took it as a compliment. Like they think I'm, they think I'm such a big channel that I, you know, that they don't see that I'm just a person with like a crappy cheap camera who's like barely making any money at this and just doing it before I go to my waitressing job every night. So <laughs> I just took it as like, okay, you think that this is like a legit place, <laughs> you know, <laughs> back when there was That's like- That's an interesting way to think about it. I should, I should adopt that. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, when I got started too on YouTube specifically, I always, I shot videos with my iPhone. Yeah, like a really crappy tripod. Actually, I remember I had like a, uh, like an ottoman for my couch, and I would just put a white Bristol board over top of it, yes. and that would be my desk. And I'd have like a crappy tripod over yeah. top with my phone in it, and no mic. I just shot through the audio yeah. on the iPhone. And the Thank thing you. is, like, I had a lot of, uh, a lot of like video friends and stuff. You know, nicely Absolutely. say to me, Becca, you should really like improve this. But I was like. If, if I have to look into all the tech and all of these things up front, it's going to paralyze me and I'm never going to do yeah. it. To make so it yeah. I just got started. And then eventually as I, once I figured out how to put one foot in front of the other and actually make a video, then I like, you know, got a new tripod, got a new camera, got a new mic, yeah. like one yeah. thing at a one time. One thing at a time. That's so smart. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the way to do it. Cause it is overwhelming to come online and you start watching videos about tech and I still get overwhelmed by, you know, we switched from Nikon to Canon last year and, or two years ago. And that was like scary for me. <laughs> like, so yeah, I get that. It can be I'm so a little jealous that you have someone helping you with that because I, I, you know, like half the time I'll hit go on my camera and then shoot the whole video and go back and it's not in focus because I don't have anyone else in the room to make sure that it's focused, you know? That's got to be tough. Like that's a whole other challenge when you're filming and making art. And I actually heard a YouTuber say she was talking, I can't remember who it was now, but um, comic artist or something. She was saying that she felt like her art is going downhill the more videos she makes. And I was like, I get that because that's how I felt before Chris came on board. Like you are so concerned with like the filming is a, an art. The Instagram photos are an art, a creative energy that you're expending. The staging for the video is artistic and creative. And, you know, so having someone else there to kind of help out with all that, it allows me a little bit more time to like just focus in so big time big time I find like I'll, I'll because I know the camera's on or like I'm like oh this this battery's gonna die in 20 minutes yeah. or whatever. I have to rush through this tutorial and then and then the art doesn't end up as good as it should and yeah. like 
at, on the one hand, you know, people who are watching, and I'm sure a lot of the viewers watching here can attest to this is like, you don't necessarily need to see the person create a masterpiece. You just really need to get like the step-by-step instruction from them. And it doesn't really matter if I, if I screwed up a line. In fact, it's kind of nicer if I do, because oh. people see that it's real, totally. um, but still you don't want to, I mean, you're putting out your art in front of hundreds of thousands of people and you don't want it to be crappy. Like, I don't know. It's a yeah, weird balance. True. Yeah. There's like a stress there. Like it yeah. has to be a certain, I don't know if you ever do where you like, will scrap everything and just start over. And yeah. Even worse because you have to scrap all the footage as well. It's not just like, okay, rip out this piece of paper. It's like, and go into both cameras and delete all the footage from the first, oh, half of the day. And, and then yeah. it can be good to have somewhere, someone else there being like, no, we're not doing that. Like, yeah. and, and if, you know, we do do that, but sometimes it's nice for someone to be like, is there a way that you can save this? And yeah. like, sometimes there is. And I'm like, oh, that didn't turn out like half bad. And I just got yeah. so like in my head in the middle of it and a video yeah. could go any which way. Like sometimes I feel like by the end of the video, I'm just like, this is how you fix this mistake. And this is how you fix that mistake. So it's like turns into its own positive thing. I yeah. Think. yeah. I think um, I just, Rebecca in the comments who, who was pulled on screen live at workshop week. Hi, Rebecca. Oh, yeah. um, she is just saying, wow, she didn't realize all the behind the scenes and she loves the realness of this. And it's true. This is what we were saying at the start where like, yep. if you don't actually know other content creators, you can't have these conversations. Whereas oh, yeah. you and I can just sit here and talk about this all day and be like, oh, you understand me, <laughs> you know? It's so nice. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. like just letting people know the amount of work it is to put out two, is it, do you do two every week? We used to, we, we did two a week for all of, um, 2019 and 2020 but then this year we went down to one knowing that I was pregnant and and now we don't know I would love for people to weigh in we don't know if we will go back to two a week or we may start a second channel um instead and diversify a bit more and get into some more crafty content because I have a lot of hobbies and I'd like to share <laughs> that was gonna be another hobbies. thing I brought up with you is like every time I see you post something I'm like where is she finding the time for this <laughs> It's like knitting and making stuffed animals and like home decor and stuff. <laughs> These are my hobbies. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That, but that, like, and actually right before I came on this, um, Joanne and Talisa, who were both instructors at workshop week, did an impromptu Instagram live and I video bombed them and they were talking about having like, you know, creative fuel basically. And like how to keep your creative fuel. And we were talking about how like, yeah, but sometimes you just want to create for yourself and not yes. post it. But yes. then even when I have a hobby, <clears throat> it's always something creative. Yeah. And I always want to want to share. Yeah. <laughs> no, totally. Totally. And you're so funny being like, how do I have time? Like, I don't know how you have time to do all this stuff that you do, because the one thing that I never have time to do is like, reply to a text or like checking my voicemail. That's like my kryptonite. I'm like, I cannot check my voicemails. Like someone called the other day and now I have to be better about it because of Sully. But like this um, uh, lady at the clinic was like, did you know that your mailbox is full? Like I called you like three times. And I was like, oh, that mailbox is Yeah, awesome. I was busy oh, knitting. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I picked up because. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but you're so good with all the like getting people together and organizing and it's amazing. That's like the thing I can never do. <laughs> I, I, I truly, truly enjoy that part of things. I'm realizing like, I think that's my, that's yeah. my, what do you call it? Like your sweet, your sweet spot as a yeah, yeah. business owner, as a yeah. creative, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, well, someone asked, how often are you creating art now with your baby? But are you, have you, I mean, you have a lot of creative hobbies, which we could consider art, but like the yeah. art that people know you for on your YouTube channel, are you doing that at all right now? Or are you just, yeah, off? I'm taking about one afternoon a week right now. And that's not even because I'm so busy with, um, baby. I mean, we are busy. Like there's always, it feels like there's always like time to, cause I'm breastfeeding. So it's very time demanding, which is fine, but it, it is sort of this busy feel. Um, but we're also being on, I think maternity leave. I'm, um, enjoying some painting and journaling, but, um, 
like if you follow me on Instagram, like yesterday I was doing some furniture refinishing. And so I'm taking on some of the bigger projects that I don't always have time to do when I'm um, in the studio all the time. So I am doing like a lot of knitting and baking and, and I like um, refinishing uh wood pieces and stuff like that. So there is a lot more of that going on, but I would probably do something creative every day. Um, and I think it's just like, for me, I always have time to do it because like, I'll do it when, like in the evening, when I'm watching TV, I'm knitting and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. so creating, not necessarily art, but yeah. always creative. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm like that too. Totally. If, I, if I pick up a hobby, it's going to be something creative. You can yeah. 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 What else do you do? Like, that's you don't put on YouTube? Uh, well, I, um, at the start of the pandemic, I started crocheting. Oh, cool. I've tried knitting. I, I'm not good at it. Then I know, I'm not just... good at crocheting. I need to figure it out, but I can't. <laughs> I guess, yeah, you kind of get into one and then, yeah. but I, as soon as I started like really enjoying crocheting, I was like, I should probably learn how to knit. Cause I feel like it can be a little more flexible, but feel the same way yeah. I feel the same about crochet I feel like there's so many more cool toys that I could make if I could learn crochet better so yeah <laughs> so mostly that or like if I if I just want to do some sort of art that's completely unrelated to calligraphy and lettering and it's just kind of like an abstract painting or whatever yeah. like that yeah. kind of thing I've just kind of jumped into buying a bunch of art supplies for that but again it paralyzed me because <laughs> now yeah. I have everything and I'm like I don't really know how to use these and I don't really have time to like take a full course or anything but yeah you know well I'm a big proponent for not, like I'm always just like just do it you don't have to learn anything <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um all right this is kind of like rewinding because we already talked about content creation a little bit but Heather wanted to know what's your process like for your content you always seem so organized and methodical when it comes to your content release and I would love some insight to inspire me to be more organized too so let's obviously say before you were on mat leave and pat leave yeah that's one of my favorite things and one of the questions that I get most often is like don't you ever run out of ideas how do you come up with video ideas and for me that's like my favorite part I just I love coming up with but the, the video topics and we'll plan a couple months in advance. And all I can say, I think is it's just like a super good community. So there's always like more ideas coming in and there's always, and because I love creating, like I always have like something that I'm kind of excited about or working on and that kind of makes its way into the videos. So Chris and I will sit down. We always have a Google doc of like just ideas. So anytime someone emails or comments and it's like, I want to see um, seashore or clouds or whatever, we just add it to the list. So we have that. And then we'll plan um, maybe the next two months. And we just say, you know, when we try to go through and if we are saying, okay, we're doing these two watercolor videos, we'll try to put an illustration in between and there's a bullet journaling. So we just kind of look at a couple months as a block and make sure that we've included like as many different topics as we want. And then I just have a really fun time trying to um, make the, make the, subjects into lessons or make them into a project and I find that part really really exciting so we just plan it out and and then we try to make sure that some of them are small videos that are manageable for us and some of them are bigger more exciting videos that maybe include more b-roll or more storyline or something like that yeah well this is a, a selfish question for me but maybe the audience would be interested too because I you are saying basically exactly what I do, like where I, instead of, because we have hired a YouTube strategist at one point and like the strategist being that they would, you know, look up keywords and things that are Mm. popular and whatever and all that kind of stuff. And we always end up butting heads because they want me to do something that's going to get good keyword results. And Mm -hmm. I want to do something that my audience is asking me for. Yeah. Um, And so like they want, to grow a new audience and I want to serve my current audience. Well, so it's yeah. like such a weird, uh, yeah. such a weird debate kind of, and we sort of meet in the middle, but most of the time I'm just doing stuff that my audience is asking me for. And yeah. it's probably affecting my growth on YouTube, but I, I, I care more about the people that are asking me for things, you know? Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Yep. Um, yeah. Every time we sort of look into SEO, it's a, such a rabbit hole that you can go down 
but that's such a good way of putting it. Like, are you trying to find a new audience or are you serving the audience that's already there? Yeah. Cause I just want to do, um, what I want to do and what, and exactly what people are asking and you get kind of in this little bubble. And, uh, and I think Chris is better for being like, that is going to be a really hard video to title. <laughs> like yeah. that is going to be so obscure, you know, and we've done some like obscure stuff this year. I'm trying to think of a good example. And some of the stuff that doesn't perform well, well are like my favorite videos. Mm -hmm. Oh, I put a lot of love into this video about making art for your own home and and that's just like a kind of a tricky one to title. And like, it's not really um, medium driven. So it was like, it was watercolor, it was acrylic. So it was just sort of vague and it just didn't do very well because it didn't have that punchy title and thumbnail. And, but that was like my little, like, I really wanted to make that video. So we yeah, but it's it so up. frustrating. <laughs> the ones that you put the most effort and the most love into yeah. are always the ones that don't do as well. And it's like, it, you just have to kind of get past that because it yeah. is what it is on, on YouTube, but I have a very specific thumbnail style that I like. And I think, you know, I'm always torn. Like if I just did more red and green, yes. like watercolor hacks, don't do this or you're dead meat, you know? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And it hack that could kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, like, yeah. <laughs> I will click. Sorry. <laughs> no, I love that because that's, that's the kind of stuff that when you look into YouTube strategy, that's what they want you to do. Oh, yeah. and it, it's like, I can't, yeah. it just feels so sleazy. And so like opposite of why I started this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. yeah. We have a YouTube partner manager right now who helps us strategize. And I, he just extended our contract with us for another six months. And this is something that YouTube does for its creators, for the people watching. And um, it's a really nice service. Um, but I always feel like I just don't take his advice very well. And when he did extend it, I was like, oh, you're going to like, you are going to extend. Like, I just thought he would be like lost cause this one. <laughs> like, I'm always kind of like, oh, I guess I could try that. And then I'm kind of back to doing my own thing, but I am trying to grow, <laughs> but just in my own style. <laughs> that's, that's exactly how I feel with mine. I love the suggestions they give me and stuff, but then I just always revert back to like, no, someone asked me for this and I like this better. Yeah, so let's just... <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay. You use a lot of fine liners for your line drawings. Does the square-ish tip ever bother you? Would a round tip feel better for floral drawing? Oh, I don't know. I never really thought about it that much. I mean, I think if I would, that's not something that I've ever really considered. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, you know, and I'm not a very technical and I'm like this with my photography as well. Like, I'm like, I know how to work the camera. If I tried to teach someone, I would be like, oh, do you press that bunny button into this thingy? Um, so I tend to just be, have a really sort of intuitive relationship with my supplies, not to say that that's any better, um, but it just wouldn't be something that I would have considered. But I think if you're kind of like, oh, this doesn't feel right for me or my style of floral illustration, just switch it up, you know, like don't don't ever feel like you have to listen to like what I would be using or saying, you know, yeah. kind of like you're the artist, you know, what's best for you. Yes. I, and I love that comment because I find the most common question that as artists we get is like, what tool is that for me specifically? Just what yeah. pen is that to the point where I ended up making a supplies guide called what pen is that? <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> and I, Like, I always just want to tell people like, here's what I'm using, but you don't have to use this. Like just yeah. whatever you want or whatever you have or whatever feels nice in your hand, you know? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. For the longest time, I couldn't link my brushes because I was just buying them at the dollar store. And I would say that in the comments as often as I could. The only reason these aren't linked is because I bought them at Dollarama, you know, like, and they work great. The only thing is when you buy those cheap brushes, like if you're following along with my videos, you're looking for the ones that are round and come to a really nice fine point. The only thing is they just won't last very long. You'll end up chucking them out you know, if you use them a lot, it could be after a week because they won't hold that fine point. Um, but if you're getting started, a couple packs of like pointed round brushes from the dollar stores, like 
really all you need and you just have to switch them up more often. Well, that's, I actually debated kind of changing my supplies guide entirely to not be brand specific and to be more like qualities specific. Sure. If you're yeah. looking for a brush that is fine pointed at, at the end and you're looking for a, a pen that is flexible or you're looking for like, you know, the, the qualities of it instead of the brands, because it's so different around the world too. Like people cannot find the same brands. Yeah panic because yeah. you know but you can find so many other supplies that still work oh totally totally yeah um, okay this is a really good question and maybe we could end with this one as multiple people asked this question um which I thought was interesting what would you tell yourself as a beginner if you could go back in time oh um yeah that's a great question and it could be like as an are a beginner artist or it could be as a beginner content creator yeah let's say artist because I think this is actually in line with something that is at the heart of the channel if I could go back and I've been really creating since I was a little kid it's my life's passion and I got really into pencil sketching as a really young person and by the time I was in high school I was doing these pencil portraits that were um, really realistic and got really into pencil shading and creating something that I could look at a photograph and kind of recreate it exactly. And then, then, then I would have this metric. If it looked exactly, if my drawing looked exactly like that photo, then that was good. And I think I just found that comforting. Like, so I know that my art is really good. And um, then it was like, okay, maybe your art is really good, but it's really boring. And then I developed this business in high school where I was doing pencil portraits and, um, you know, I don't think it was like charging like 40 bucks, you know, I'm putting in like hours and hours, like days and days of work on these portraits. Um, and it got really stressful and pedantic. And just so go, if I could tell myself, it would be what I say on the channel all the time, which is just like, just take joy in the materials, just have fun. Like art really isn't about getting it perfect or getting it right. I mean, you have a camera in your pocket all the time, so you don't need to be a camera. You can, you know, interpret the world in your own unique artistic way. And that's like a thousand times more interesting and joyful and creative than like getting it right. I wasted so much time and I almost just fell out of love with art because after high school, I applied to art uh, colleges and universities and then I got in and then I decided not to go. I actually just felt like, Bleh, I just don't want to do it. And I ended up going and teaching English in Hong Kong for a year and then I never really, I went to university, but I dro ended up dropping out. Um, but for almost all my 20s, I really just didn't do a lot of art. And actually the art that I loved the most was when I was teaching in Hong Kong, I was making all these posters for my classroom for all the little kids and like getting really creative, having fun. And then I would also, I would still make birthday cards for people and that would be my creative time. And so when I started kind of finding my way back, those things informed how I was going to approach art and I never really picked up pencil portraits again not really but instead I was like how can I make my greeting cards better and how can I make my cartoony illustrations you know um more like how can I take that farther and what else can I do with that so it would just be to like let go of the idea of perfection or being good because the way you present your version of the world that's like what's really really interesting it doesn't have to look good it doesn't have to look like what I'm doing either so that's such a good tip that's such a long a answer good tip. <laughs> that's a hack <laughs> just kidding no but it's it's so true I think that that's a, a big piece of what holds people back from creating in general so I feel like that's the perfect answer and the perfect way to end our chat cool <laughs> thank you so much Shada for coming on I um I mean, I, I almost wanted to be like, we should take a little break after workshop week. And I shouldn't be asking people to come on and do more things <laughs> with me, but here we yeah, are. It's fun. It's great. This has been like just great to meet so many people. And and it's been a lot of just a lot of fun. Workshop week was so fun. Yeah, was that's so fun. That's, that's it all of it shocked me. All of it. Yeah. Like, it was so good. You're gonna do it again next year, right? I don't think there's any way I can't. Yeah. You know? You know? Chris was saying like, this is going to be like VidCon for the arts community. Like this is going to be at the center of the content 
creation arts world. Like he was like, Becca has like built something incredible. So yeah. I mean, that's a very, very nice compliment. So you can thank him for that. (laughs) Well, we were very impressed. (laughs) Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to stop the live stream, but thanks everybody for tuning in. Oh my God. There's lots of people here. That was great. Perfect. Maybe people do like the lunchtime, the lunchtime slot. Lunch hour. Everybody's saying workshop week 2022. Yeah. Let's do it. (laughs) All right. Thanks, Jada. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.